Hi guys, Nira and Bear here from GSD Bear. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a bit of a checklist for your dog. Essential items that we personally use every day and we recommend and why. Uh, obviously with Bear being a German Shepherd, some of these items are going to be more tailored to large breed dogs, but a majority of them can be used with any breed to be honest. I'll link these products in the description below, so if you fancy any of them you can check them out later. Let's get into it. So my first recommended product is an adjustable training lead. So you can see here I've got one from Halty, but you can get it from a variety of brands, a lot of places do them, and they're all basically the same. Um, so you've got a couple of different notches where you can adjust the length to, so that's on the shortest set in there, and that's about one metre, or maybe a bit more than a metre. Then you could adjust it to the middle setting, and that's like 1.5, or you can put it on the longest setting, which is what we use when we go to training on a Saturday, and it's like two metres, that's really long. So what's great about these is that you can adjust the length really easily and quickly depending on what you want it for. So on a normal walk when Bear's walking to heel, I'll have it on the shortest setting that I've just showed you, but if you want to give them a little bit more free rein you can use that middle notch or you can make it even longer if say you're in a field and you want them to just slip around. These kind of leads, they're really strong and durable, I've had this particular one for about two years now and it's still like new. They wash really well and it's just nice and comfortable to hold. It's so important when you've got a big breed like a German Shepherd, well any breed really, but particularly powerful breeds that you've got a strong and reliable leash for them. Any good quality short or medium length lead will do the job, but I just really like the practicality of this halty leash because it's just so versatile, you can use it for all sorts of activities. The next really important thing you want to get is a good quality and well fitting collar. Uh, in the past we've always used these sort of collars where it's a buckle and you've addressed it to the length that you want. Um, we did actually have a problem with one of these once, I think I put it on too loose of a setting because I didn't want it to restrict his neck too much and it was so loose and he's got such thick fur that um, it just slipped over his head. So for that reason he uses a martingale collar now and I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see how easily this comes off his head. And the reason I can afford to have that so loose on him is because of this little bit of chain section here. So that gives you an extra bit of give whilst he's wearing it. So normally a collar would be that tightly fitting around his neck for it to be safe. But when he's in the house and he's relaxed and he's obviously not on a lead, or if he's walking on the lead but he's walking to heel and he doesn't need to restrict him, it means that he can have that extra amount of neck room, which is more breathable for him, it's more comfortable, he doesn't really realise he's wearing one. So with these collars, you adjust it to the size that you want it and then it just stays at it. So you use the little toggle there, rather than having to you know, buckle it every time you put it on. And then when it's the size that you want it to be, you can just easily slide it over the head, like that, whenever you want to take them out. So that section of chain at the back of the collar, that just gives you a little bit of extra breathing room. Um, when you're out, if they do pull on the lead, that chain then will pull together so it's a properly fitting collar again. Uh, it just means that they can't slip out of it. And I just want to clarify that this is not a choke chain. It will not get tighter the more they pull. It only has two settings, which is one, nice and loose when the lead is relaxed, and two, the tightness of a normal fitting collar if they do pull. And I feel the need to explain this because I had a couple of Karens recently send me some hate on Instagram because she could see Bear was wearing this martingale collar in his photo. Um, and she went on to tell me how they're cruel and they cause the dog's pain, which is absolutely not true. Obviously, I would never do anything to hurt Bear. I mean, any tool can be misused, but as long as you use it properly, like many other collars, many other leads, there is absolutely no way this is going to cause your dog any pain. When they pull, it gets no tighter than any other type of fitted collar. The main reason I bought this for Bear is because he wears his collar all the time in the house, except maybe at night. So when he used to wear a normal buckle collar, even though it was properly fitted to the right size, it would usually leave a dent in his fur. But the martingale collar, because of that extra little bit of chain at the back, you can afford to have it loosely fitting, so it's more like a necklace than a collar. And it's just nicer for him to wear, it's more breathable for him, it's more comfortable for him. And like I said, with a lot of collars, they can leave a sort of dent in the fur. Um, but with this collar, it doesn't do that so much and it doesn't cause as much matting underneath the collar. So that's just why I prefer it for there. So the next item I would really recommend if you've got a large breed dog or any dog that just likes to pull on the lead and maybe you're having a bit of difficulty training it out of them is a either a halty head collar or a gentle leader like we've got for Bear. So with this, you've got two straps there and they form a bit of a collar around the neck, the top of the neck and then this little loop here goes over their nose and that just stops them from 
wanting to pull because it encourages their head back around if they do and it's not painful for them in any way it's just as it says a gentle leader and it just redirects their pulling and makes them think oh it's better if I don't pull this is more comfortable and honestly it's been a game changer for Veer when he was a puppy he used to pull quite a lot this totally stopped that so I'll just pop it on him for you so you can see what it looks like so the nose loop there pop it over his nose and the two collars, two straps at the back. There we go. You can see that is not tight at all. And then you've got this little bit of chain, not chain, sorry, a little bit of material here. And you get the hook there. Hook that onto the little loop. And then, because it's long, you can also attach it to the collar as well as like a safety precaution. And that just means, you know, if that did slip off him, you've still got him on the collar, so he's not going to have an accident and run off. Is that okay? Is that okay? Not too bad. So even though I use this for Bear every day, he actually walks to heel lovely. So 99% of the time, the lead is loose and he doesn't even realise that he's wearing it. But sometimes if he sees another dog and they bark at him, he can get a little bit wound up and that's when it really comes in handy because it stops him from pulling towards them. And without that, I would really struggle to hold him because he is so strong and I'm only like five foot three. Uh, but it just gives you that extra bit of peace of mind that when you're out, if they do try and bolt off, you can easily rein them in. If they wore a normal collar and they're pulling hard against that all the time, that can cause a lot of damage to the neck and the trachea. But with a head halter on or a gentle leader, it just discourages that straight away. It just makes the walk a lot more comfortable for you and a lot more comfortable for the dog. This next one is going to come as no surprise, something you're going to get through a lot of. It is poo bags. The thing I like about these ones is that they're biodegradable and I'll put the link to them in the description below. But yeah, because you, you're picking up poo every day and I just think you're going to have that in plastic for like a hundred years and it's such a waste. Uh, whereas with these poo bags, they're just as strong as normal poo bags. Some of them don't have um, handles and that's really the only drawback, but I mean you can tie them just the same, it just takes a little bit more time. It just makes me feel a lot better about picking up three dogs worth of poo every day. <laughs> and a lot of them come in like a little reel so you can have one of those dispensers and attach it to the lead. They're just handy to have, um, so yeah, definitely have a look at those. Next one is grooming tools. So for Bear, I use this, which is a Furminator. Um, and this is honestly, I use this every day almost, it's so good. It makes such a difference when you've got a dog that sheds a lot. They typically shed heavily twice a year, but honestly it's little and often all year round. The fur is never ending, and if you want a German Shepherd, that's just something you've got to get used to. So Bear's got a medium length coat. It's longer than short, but shorter than long, if you know what I mean. As with all German Shepherds, it's a double coat. So they've got a thick, fluffy undercoat underneath and a sleek and shiny outer coat on the top. So you really need to groom them at least once a week and hoover daily to keep on top of that. So with this Furminator, um, honestly, you would not believe the amount of fluff that you'll get out of them with these things. It is unreal. You could honestly make a small dog with the amount of fluff that you'll get out of them. But yeah, you comb them through, it rakes out the loose fur, and it just keeps their coat nice and tidy. And there's different types of furminates depending on the breed of dog and the length of their fur. I'll add a link to the one that we use in the description, but they really are worth getting if you've got a dog that sheds a lot. Definitely get some good grooming tools for your dog because it is super important for keeping their coat nice and healthy and shiny. Another really important thing to consider when you get your dog is to have a really good dog bed for them. There's so many different types on the market which differ in quality and price. Honestly, I think if you're gonna buy one, you need to buy the best that you can with your money. I've bought loads of cheap dog beds in the past and they just flatten into pancakes over time. So you end up spending more money anyway. So if you buy one good dog bed, you know it's gonna last them for a long time and you're gonna get your money out of it that way and your dog's gonna get the best benefits out of it too. So Bear has a big barker bed, which is an orthopaedic bed, and it's really thick foam, especially designed for dogs that might have joint issues or hip dysplasia like Bear did. And even though that he's recovered now, we just have that to sort of maintain his hips and it just keeps him comfortable. Large breed dogs, they really shouldn't stay on the floor for too long. And the problem with those uh, cheaper dog beds is that they do flatten over time and then their weight, rather than it being supported by the bed, it sinks through to the floor so they can get pressure sores which is something obviously you want to avoid. So yeah, do your research, have a look around. Sometimes they're a little bit of an investment, but if you do spend more on them and they're gonna last, like the Big Barker Bell, I think that's got like a 10 year warranty. So I know that's gonna last him practically his whole life. 
So yeah, I'll link that in the description below. Obviously there's loads of different dog beds out there. I'm not saying you have to get a big Barker bed, but personally I do recommend them because they have been amazing for Bear. Beforehand he would just sleep anywhere, he'd sleep on the sofa, he'd sleep anywhere but the beds that I bought him. But now he actually does opt to sleep on it, which is something he's never really done before. So that says a lot about it, I think, to me anyway. If you're the sort of person who likes to take their dog everywhere with you, like me, and you like taking them for adventures and treks uh, to the beach, you might want to look at getting a travel hammock for your car. This is something that we've got for Bear. It hooks around the head straps of either side of the car and it just creates a little bit of a hammock in between. So it's somewhere that he can sit comfortably. He's not going to fall down into the footwell. Um, you can also get a little seat belt sort of thing that'll, adjust, that'll fit into the car buckle for safety. What's really good about these is that they're kind of universal, so they fit most cars. So I was using it in my dad's truck, but also in my Mini Cooper. So you can use it for all sorts of cars. So it's not the sort of thing you've got to get specifically to the size of car that you have. They're waterproof, which is great if you're taking them down to the beach or the river. Um, and they've got like a non-slip matte surface at the bottom as well, so they're not going to be sliding around when you're driving. On the subject of being out and about, something else you're going to want to have is a water dispenser for your dog. So you can get all sorts of types of these. You take it with you, it comes with a little strap so you can put it on your belt or on the lead or whatever. And then with this particular one you just sort of squeeze it and then it'll fill up with a well of water. Nothing in there at the moment, is it? I guess I'll leave that. I do find that Bear prefers it to these sort of winds. For some reason he doesn't like to drink out of the tray, uh, but that's just his preference. Anything like this will do the job. But just have something like this with you, because if it's hot, it's going to be so much easier if you just whip out one of these and have to go and find a shop, get a bottle of water and then cup your hands together. So yeah, definitely look at getting a portable water dispenser. Something else that you're probably going to want to look at are the Kongs. So you can get these in loads of different types. Um, this one is one that you fill with a filling. Stupid. This is one that you put a filling inside of. Um, it just takes them a little bit of time to get the treats out. That keep him busy for hours and this is an extra large heavy duty one I think this is specially designed for heavy chewers like Bear and he's had that since a puppy and you wouldn't really know there's no marks on it really so worth the money. Another thing you can get is a Kong wobbler so you put the treats into that hole the bottom is weighted so he just knocks it around trying to get the treats out of them and he actually does really like this one. Recently I've started putting his food biscuits in there for the day because he's not a big eater in the evening but I like him to have something during the afternoon as well. So if I put his dog biscuits in here, he tends to think that they're treats and he's more likely to eat them. <laughs> Gotta get sneaky. <laughs> and last but not least, you wanna get a first aid kit. You never know when you're gonna need it. Luckily, Bear hasn't really been that problematic with minor injuries. I mean, obviously he had his hips, uh, which wasn't his fault. But if you're out and about and they've got a cut or they've stepped on a thorn, they're bleeding, you know, this sort of thing, you're going to have all sorts of dressings in there, antiseptic wipes. Actually, let's have a look what's in this one. Yeah, dressings. Plasters. I don't really know if you'd use a plaster for a dog. Maybe if it was on the ear or something. Bandages. Other bandages. Wound cleansing wipes. I mean, it depends on which one you buy, obviously. Little safety clips if you're going to bandage them up. You can get bandages that are sort of self-adhesive as well. They're probably worth looking at. Uh, this is just a cheap one that I got on eBay. But you can get ones that are specific for pets, um, which will probably be even better again. Yeah, definitely worth looking at getting one of these if you're going on long walks and you're sort of away from facilities that might be able to help you. Just definitely worth having one in your bag for emergencies. Oh, bonus one as well. This is one that I use all the time. I like to wear this on the walk, so that goes around my waist. Like that. You can have your treats in the front pocket, which is really handy, because if I'm trying to distract Bear for something, or I'm just training him, I can easily grab those out of there. You can also put your poo bags in there. You can get that little dispenser bit there, so you can get them to thread through. Uh, pop your phone in the back. This is actually one that I bought from Amazon and you're supposed to attach a lead to go jogging but I mean it doubles up as a treat bag as well so I use it all the time even if we're just going on a short lead walk and it's just really great. That's honestly one of my favourite things that I've bought recently. <laughs> Definitely recommend looking at those if you're going jogging with the dog or if you're just looking for like an alternative to a bum bag sort of thing. 
So that's it for today's video. Hopefully you found some of these helpful. As I said, I've put the links to them in the description below, so check those out if anything is scratch fancy. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and let us know in the comments if these are things that you've already used. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications so you know when we put out new videos, which are every week. See you next time.